Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna show you a really easy to use and really powerful photo editing app for your phone. It works for iPhones and for Android phones, and it's actually made by Google, it's called Snapseed. I'll show you some of the most essential things because there's plenty that the app could do, but I'll show you if you're getting started with photo editing on your phone, these are the things that are a must have. So find Snapseed in the App Store or the Google Play Store and download it. And let me show you once you open the app here, the first thing you need to do is you need to give it permission to bring in a photo. So I already took a photo on my phone that I have, so I'll press plus. I already gave it permission to use this photo here. And again, you could go ahead and access your camera as well and just take a picture before you edit it. But I already have one available to me. And I chose this one because, you know, it's a little bit dark here. The color is a little bit green. So I want to show you how to fix things like that with your image as well. But if you look, the first thing it does is it opens up this panel called looks. Now these are basically filters that you could apply. So you could go through and apply any number of filters. They have black and white options here on the back of it too. I'm just gonna leave it alone though. I'm not gonna add any filter. So I'll leave looks alone. The next important page is tools. Now this is basically everything that Snapseed could do and all these different things do different things to your image. So let me go through the most important things. I'll show you about five different things that you need to know, and then I'll touch up on some other ones that come in handy. But Tune Image is probably the most useful because with Tune Image, what you could do is you could change all kinds of things. I'm gonna press this to show you. You could change brightness, contrast, saturation. All these right here are available to you. So I'm gonna choose brightness, and if you see that slider on top, to make things brighter, you could just go ahead and go this way. So I need to make this image brighter, so I'll bring it over to this side. I'm gonna press the check mark. So again, I'm gonna go back here to show you on their tune image because there's plenty more here. A lot of times I like to apply some contrast. So you could basically make things darker on the, on the shadows here with contrast. And if you wanted to add saturation here, saturation basically makes it more vibrant or turns it to black and white here. So I'm gonna add a little more saturation and press OK. Now, let me just go back here because on this page there's also this filter. If you press this one, it also lets you auto adjust things. So that just did an auto adjustment for me. But in this case, I don't wanna do auto, I did it manually. So do explore this tab. This basically is one of the most powerful options inside of this app. Then details is also critical here because you could basically, if you look close, you could bring in details into someone's face or smooth things out if you go this way. So I like to smooth things out by giving structure a negative value. I'll press the check mark here. Let's go back to tools here. Curves is a little bit more advanced, but it has to do with your exposure as well, how bright or dark your image is. But white balance is critical because the white balance on this is a little bit wrong. That's why it looks green. To do white balance, you could do auto white balance. That's this option right here. And just like that, it's fixed my white balance for me. And you could pick with this picker a white area in your image and it will try to adjust according to that. So if I take it over here, you could see if I pick a white section, maybe her shirt's white or this wall here, I could do a white balance that way as well. So when it comes to photo editing, this tune image and white balance come in handy a lot. And then cropping comes in really handy because you could change the size of your image, right? So if you're making something square, could go ahead and place that this way. And there are other options as well. You can see all of them over here. So you could make things vertical or horizontal. I'll press done. Okay, back to this menu again. Now these are some more advanced things, right? Those are the basic of photo editing, but you also could expand some of your images, meaning it's gonna add to your image things that are not there already. So look at this, if I extend this out, it's going to try to extend the borders automatically. Now this is more advanced. These are things you could do with Photoshop, for example. So that's really, really neat. That does come in handy, especially with portraits that are outside. Then healing is one of the most useful things with this because with healing, you can basically zoom really into something. And with the brush selected here, the healing brush, basically, you could take away any imperfections that you see in the skin. Now this is something that was much more advanced with Photoshop, but it's available in Snapseed. And then you could zoom out to see if that looked realistic and then press the check mark. And then again, under tools, you also have this thing called brush. So with brush, you could basically 
change things with dodge and burn. So dodge and burn makes things darker if you go ahead and use dodge and burn. In this case, looks like I'm under dodge, so it's making things brighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. Let's go back under brush. And you also have things for exposure. So if you wanted to just make one area of the image brighter, you could do it this way with that. So that comes in really, really handy. And then the same thing, if I go back to brushes, with temperature and saturation. So if I wanted to just make one thing really, really saturated, I could go ahead and do that. So you see, I could make her skin really, really saturated. In this image, it doesn't look great, but you get the idea here. Those are very, very useful options over there. So healing and brush is what I showed you. Now, these other things like drama, these are also filters that you could apply to change things based on different moods. So make sure you explore some of those options over here. So drama, grainy film, grunge, black and white, film noir, those are all the different things. And the two last things I wanna show you is lens blur is a really cool option here because with lens blur, you could blur, you could just make you know this area into focus and then the rest out of focus and you could change the blur strength. So if I really, you see what it's doing to the edges, it really makes you pop from your image here. So I'll press the check mark on that. And then the last two here, you could add text. So that's pretty straightforward. You just type text like this. You have a bunch of them to choose from. And you also have frames here where you could add different borders to your image, like picture frames that are super handy. So I'll add one of those as well. Oh, one more thing I wanna show you too with tools here before we get to exporting. Look at this tool. This is really interesting. There's this thing called head pose. Let me go ahead and select that. It's kind of strange, but you could turn someone's face a little bit you see this? It's very subtle, but it's pretty interesting. I've never seen something this advanced where you could go ahead and change a photo here on your phone. So this also has other options too. Let me show you with smile here. You get this slider on top. Look at that. You can make people smile here or take away their smile even. Very subtle changes here, but this option is really, really interesting where you could make someone pose here using this 3D menu. So those are lots of the tools, looks we looked at, those are filters. On top, you could go ahead and undo and revert any edits and see all your edits here. And finally, for exporting, so to keep all our changes here and export it, press export, and you could actually save this, but I always recommend you save a copy because you don't wanna apply things to this original image. So I save a copy, you could also export too. And sometimes you just wanna press share from here and then it's gonna apply all those filters. And if you wanna just share as a message or email or to social medias, you could do it directly from there as well. But typically what I like to do is just save it to my phone. So save a copy, it will save it next to this image in my photo library. Now for a free photo editing on your phone, this is really, really powerful. So I recommend you give it a try. I'm gonna give this app a solid five out of five, one of the best photo editors I've actually explored on my phone. I hope you found this video useful. Make sure you subscribe for easy to follow App of the Day videos every single week. And I'll see you next time.